Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of America, a poem written by Allen Ginsberg. He wrote this poem after the Second World War and Ginsberg is considered as one of the lead figures in the beat movements. The poem America was written on January 17, 1956 when Ginsberg was in Berkeley which is in California. And America is included in his collection Howl and Other Poems which was published in November 1956. He has used the technique of stream of consciousness in this poem and he has also personified America and he actually urges America to bring in some positive change among the people for prosperity in future. And he actually addresses America directly and expresses his despair about his financial situation and the way the country is engaged in the war. He compares the time of communist ruling to his present time of idleness and he makes a plea full of sarcasm for the sake of the other downtrodden people. He also makes fun of the people who blame every mishap on Russia and furthermore he states that Change cannot come unless the people take the initiative themselves. Finally, he concludes the poem with the optimistic view of the speaker's determination to help correct all these problems on his own accord. Now we'll see what he says in the poem. He says, actually he is talking directly to America. He says, America, I have given you all and now I am nothing. He says, I have given you whatever I had and now I don't have anything meaning financially and also physically. America, $2.27, January 17, 1956. I can't stand my own mind. America, when will we end the human war? Go fuck yourself with your atom bomb. I don't feel good, don't bother me. I won't write my poem till I am in my right mind. America, when will you be angelic? When will you take off your clothes? When will you look at yourself through the grave? When will you be worthy of your million Trotskytes? America, why are your libraries full of tears? America, when will you send your eggs to India? I am sick of your insane demands. When can I go into the supermarket and buy what I need with my good looks? America, after all it is you and I who are perfect, not the next world. Your missionary is too much for me. You made me want to be a saint. There must be some other way to settle this argument. Burroughs is in Tangeries. I don't think he'll come back. It's sinister. Are you being sinister or is this some form of practical joke? I'm trying to come to the point. I refuse to give up my obsession. America, stop pushing. I know what I'm doing. America, the plum blossoms are falling. I haven't read the newspapers for months. Every day somebody goes on trial for murder. Now here he begins with uh, stating his disappointment in America and also says about his poor financial and mental condition. He disapproves of the human and nuclear warfare present in America at that time. He even questions America when it can offer him justice, tolerance, freedom and acceptance as it has made the world believe about it. He criticizes America for failing to aid countries such as India. Then he turns the conversation into an indirect warning to America for viewing itself as the sort of perfect world. He tries suggesting it to look for some other way than using the military power. He then redirects his perspective towards people, the nature and possibly the justice system of America post-World War. Then the poem continues saying, America... I feel sentimental about the wobblies. America, I used to be a communist when I was a kid. I am not sorry. I smoke marijuana every chance I get. I sit in my house for days on end and stare at the roses in the closet. When I go to Chinatown, I get drunk and never get laid. My mind is made up there is going to be trouble. You should have seen me reading Marx. My psychoanalyst thinks I'm perfectly right. I won't say the Lord's Prayer. I have mystical visions and cosmic vibrations. America, I still haven't told you what you did to Uncle Max after he came over from Russia. 
Now he criticizes America for throwing light upon his own character. He describes himself as a supporter of the industrial workers of the world, the Wobblies. And influenced by his mother's communist affiliations, he wanted to help workers and laborers as a lawyer. He highlights his support for socialism and this shows his indifference to the existing system of America at that time. And about his religious beliefs, he says, I won't say the Lord's Prayer, I have mystical visions and cosmic vibrations. He disapproves of what America has done to a family who came over from Russia. He continues saying, I am addressing you. Are you going to let your emotional life be run by Time magazine? I am obsessed by Time magazine. I read it every week. Its cover stares at me every time I slink past the corner candy store. I read it in the basement of the Berkeley Public Library. It's always telling me about responsibility. Businessmen are serious. Movie producers are serious. Everybody serious but me. It occurs to me that I am America. I am talking to myself again. And here he addresses America directly and questions the way the people live and lead by. He wonders how long the country is going to let the Time magazine rule their emotions for them. It is always speaking about the seriousness of businessmen and producers, possibly alluding to the conformist nature of American workers. Once again, he continues with his perspective that he is America and he states that he is talking to himself again, that is myself again. Asia is rising against me. I haven't got a Chinaman's chance. I'd better consider my national resources. My national resources consist of two joints of marijuana, millions of genitals, and unpublishable private literature that jet planes 1,400 miles an hour and 25,000 mental institutions. I say nothing about my presence, nor the millions of underprivileged who live in my flower pots under the light of 500 suns. I have abolished the war houses of France. Tangiers is the next to go. My ambition is to be president despite the fact that I am a Catholic. Here he takes a fresh perspective yet continuing with seeing himself as America itself. He sees how Asia is growing against America which has no chance similar to that of China in the war. He continues to criticize America for ignoring his people and focusing on other issues such as the war houses of France and Tangiers. In line 53, the word president is an allusion to John F. Kennedy, whose Catholic faith caused the American people to doubt his political standing prior to his election. And finally, he says, America, how can I write a holy litany in your silly mood? I will continue like Henry Ford, my strophes are as individual as his automobiles, more so they are all different sexes. America, I will sell you strophes $2,500 a piece. $500 down on your old trophy. America, free Tom Mooney. America, save the Spanish loyalist. America, Sacco and Venzuet must not die. America, I am the Scottsboro boys. America, when I was seven, MoMA took me to communist cell meetings. They sold us garbanzos, a handful per ticket. A ticket cost a nickel and the speeches were free. Everybody was angelic and sentimental about the workers. It was all so sincere, you have no idea what a good thing the party was in 1835 Scott. Nearing was a grand old man, a real mensch, Mother Bloor, the silk strikers, Iwiblik. Made me cry, I once saw the Yiddish orator, Israel Amterplein. Everybody must have been a spy. Now he begins with a question and his comments to America. He asks how he is supposed to write a prayer with the country's present state. He compares his poems to the assembling of automobiles. Like Henry Ford, he plans to assemble his poems as he likes individuals from others as sexes are from each other. Ginsburg speaks of Tom, Tom Mooney, a World War worker, the Spanish loyalist who fought for the Spanish Republic. Sacco and Vensity, the executed Italian activist, and the Scottsboro boys who were released from their death sentences. He describes a happy memory of a communist meeting Ginsburg attended as a child. However, everybody must, be, must have been a spy at the end of the line expresses the diplomatic thought of the poet Albert America. He then continues saying, America, you don't really want to go to war. America, it's, ba it's them bad Russians. 
them Russians, them Russians, and them China men, and them Russians. The Russia wants to eat us alive. The Russia's power mad. She wants to take our cars from out our garages. Her wants to grab Chicago. Her needs a red Reader's Digest. Her wants are auto plants in Siberia. Him, big bureaucracy running our filling stations. That's no good, um. Him make Indians learn read. Him need big black niggers. Ha! Her make us all work 16 hours a day. Help! The poet now criticizes America for blaming Russia for everything. And he makes fun of America's paranoia over communist Russia. And then finally he says, America, this is quite serious. America, this is the impression I get from looking in the television set. America, is this correct? I'd better get right down to the job. It's true I don't want to join the army or turn Latis in precision parts factories. I am nearsighted and psychopathetic. Anyway, America, I'm putting my cure shoulder to the wheel. Berkeley, January 17, 1956. Here ends the poem and the poet uses a more serious tone to tell America that this is quite serious. The job the poet indicates here is to take up his own way to bring changes to the social condition and thus he ends the poem in a positive view saying that the people only should make the change in America so that America can go forward and come out of this post-World War situation and lead towards glory. It's a very beautiful poem written by him. If you have anything more to add on to what I've said, please write it in the comment box. Like the video, share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.